This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at painting weights. Now, we just took our crow and bound the geometry to its skeleton. And we can see when we move the joints, the geometry follows that skeleton. But not all of the geometry moves correctly, and we can see the body is kind of pulling. And even up in the head, we have vertices that are moving around too much when the wing actually moves. We want to go through and fix those by using a paint tool to paint specific weights in these areas. And when we say painting weights, we're actually just referring to the amount of influence a vertex receives from a specific joint. So let's get started and we'll select the geometry. And it's very important that we do have our geometry selected prior to going into the paint weights tool. I will choose skin, edit smooth skin, and we'll open the tool options for paint skin weights. Now my tool settings are off to the left here and in the middle I have the ability to choose the joint that I want to work on or the joint I wish to paint weights for. And up top we'll see some very similar tools like we had with the sculpt geometry tool. We have different profiles for the various brushes that we have, the radius upper and radius lower limit for the actual size of the brush. And then we have here the normalize weights and the weight type. And this is just referring to normal skin weights or that dual quaternion blend weight. And we're using our normal skin weight, which is a quaternion only weighting method. Let's select the wing and get rid of some of the weighting that's influencing the body. When the wing moves, the head should not deform. To remove these weights, I'm going to use the solid brush, which will eliminate any fall off, so it'll get rid of the weights rather quickly. And I'll scroll down and choose the paint operation to replace. And I'll set that value to zero. And we'll just come back out to the surface and paint just using the left mouse button. And I can hold the left mouse button down and just go across the surface and paint a value of zero, which in effect eliminates any of the weighting that it's receiving from this particular joint. And that joint is the joint that I have selected up here. So we'll take all of that out there. Okay, now that isolates it pretty well. And then we can select our joint and see how that has influenced it and now. That body is not moving anymore. We're getting a little deformation right in there, which is normal. And we might even want to carry some of that back into the body. So I'm going to rotate that wing down and go back into my paint weights tool. And I'll use the smooth brush to bring some of that weighting back over here, but just a subtle amount. And instead of my solid brush, I'm going to choose my soft brush and come in and gently smooth some of those weights out so we get a little bit better of a blending. And you can see the geometry being influenced as I'm doing it because the joint is actually rotated. And I went a little too far down there on the leg. So I'll just choose replace, bring my brush back, and go over it. We'll go over it a couple times just to make sure because I am using that soft brush. That looks a lot better. 
let's select the head and that's here and we'll use the neck joint now that has a lot of influence on it there when the neck rotates it should not be rotating down here on the body let's take a look and see how that is influencing it it's not too extreme but i think we will smooth it out a little bit so i'm going to rotate that neck and then select my geometry go back into the tool I'll choose smooth and let's iron this out right up here and just give it a bit of a brush to soften some of those deformation effects And we'll use replace with a full value of one to get a full effect on the head. And my guess is that a lot of the weight is being added from that top joint there. That's one of those end joints. And we'll just paint that. And what we can actually do is select that end joint. And there you can see how much of an influence that's having on the rest of the geometry. And we can just get rid of all of the weights off of there entirely by using the replace paint operation with a value of zero and we'll just scroll that over and then just choose flood and that gets rid of all of that weight on there then we'll go back to our neck and we can take our value back up to one and just keep painting to add more weight to that. And since we know we want to get it to one, we'll use our solid brush to quickly get those values where they need to be. And now we want to blend that in a little bit more with the body. And you can see the body is influencing the top there. And I don't want it to, so we'll just choose a value of zero and eliminate all of the weighting there. And we'll even get rid of it down on the neck. And then come back over with the smooth tool so that we have a little bit better control over those values and they're not too extreme. And we'll go back to the head or the neck joint, and let's give those a little bit of a smooth as well. Now, while painting weights, we can select just the bones that we want to work with, and we'll choose a couple of these. Let's grab the root, the body, and the neck, and we'll grab that end joint too. And we can use the tack up here at the top which will pin all of those joints that I had selected and now I can just work with these. My other joints haven't gone away. My display just shortens so that I don't have to see them all. That makes it a little bit easier to work and go back and forth since we do need to go back and forth quite a bit as we smooth and remove weights. To get back to our normal view we'll just click that tack again to go back and see the full list of our joints. Now, just like with the interactive skin bind tool, we have our color ramp and we can switch the color ramp to go to black and white or use any color that we choose to. 
And if we just turn it off, it'll just default to a black and white map. Now we do not have a reflection with the painting weights tool. And we actually use a mere skin weights tool to transfer weights from one side of the character to the other. Again, like with most of the things that we do inside of Maya, we just work on one half of the model, and when we're done, we can use that mere skin weights. So this saves us the time from having to paint both sides. Now, our normalize weights operation is set to post. What this does is allows the weights to total a value higher than one or lower than one. So typically, our weights should be totaling a full value of one. With post turned on, they're allowed to go in either direction and they do not have to total that value of one. This allows you to make a lot of alterations to the weights without seeing any adverse effects. But in the end, we do want those weights to be at a value of one. Now we can do this pretty easily by just clicking on this and setting that normalize to interactive. So if I choose that, it gives me this display here saying that it has changed and do you really want to do it? Yes, we do. And now that updates and now it's at a full value of one for every single vertex. We can go back to that post if I want to continue painting just by clicking on it and choose post and hit yes. And now I'm back into that post mode and I can kind of safely go through now and paint without worrying about seeing any of those adverse effects. And some of the things that can happen when you're in an interactive mode is you might see vertices go flying that they get assigned a full value of one to some other joint. And so the vertices will pop or push in. Stuff like that does not do well when we try to undo it. So it's best that we work in that post mode, and then when we're done, we can go back to interactive. Now, even if we stay in that post mode, the weighting will be fine. So you can actually animate your geometry and keep that post operation. But again, for a lot of other reasons, such as exporting to a game engine, we want those values to be at one. So we typically will do that to enforce the one value. This concludes our video on painting weights.